Stephen Foster was one of America's best songwriters. His songs are tuneful, they're easy to sing, there's a folk-like quality to them that makes them memorable. Many of them are still sung today. In fact, you may well know some of them. But there's one of his songs that is unlike any of his others. It speaks to what we are experiencing right now in our own time, even as it did in his own life and times. Hi, my name is Linda Ginrich, and I'm the conductor of Master Chorus East Side, and this is the sixth in our series, Songs for the Soul, Choral Music for These Trying Times. Foster was born in Pittsburgh in 1826, and he showed early musical talent, but his family didn't particularly encourage him in that. He decided to pursue music anyway, and by the late 1840s, he was beginning to achieve success with his songs. He wrote sentimental parlor songs. Um, song, these were songs that were easy enough that people could sing them in their own parlors or living rooms while they accompanied themselves on their piano. Songs like I Dream of Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, which he wrote for his wife, and Beautiful Dreamer. And he also wrote minstrel show songs like Nellie Bly and Old Folks at Home. By the early 1850s, he was actually able to support himself as a songwriter. In fact, he was quite astute and ahead of his time in the contracts he asked for. Not only did he receive one-time payment for his songs, he also received royalties, which was very unusual at the time. He made such a promising start things should have continued to go well with him. But by the mid-1850s, hard times, some of his own making, began to hit. His best friend and both his parents died. Alcoholism began to rear its ugly head. There was a brief separation from his wife. Debts began to pile up. He began drawing money against future royalties from his publishers, and eventually he was forced to sell all future rights to his songs in order to pay his debts. It was then, in 1854, that the song unique in his repertoire was written, Hard Times Come Again No More. It's singable like his parlor songs, but it's not sentimental. It has a four-part chorus like his minstrel show songs, but there are no references to the South, no use of dialect. The music and lyrics are very poignant, but there is also a rhythmic vitality to it, which is a rare combination in his songs. It's about poverty, not only financial poverty, but also poverty of spirit, misery. He calls us to pause in life's pleasures and to sup sorrow with the poor. He reminds us that even as we seek mirth and beauty, there are frail forms fainting at the door. And he cries out over and over again, hard times come again no more. That's such an interesting phrase. What appears at first to be a clumsy flipping of the words actually causes the emphasis to fall right where it should, squarely on no more. What is most touching is poverty and misery were stalking him. His output began to wane. His drinking increased. There were more family separations. His career faded, and he slowly sank into obscurity. The song oddly foreshadowed the arc of his own life and that of the country as well. He was only 37 when he died in January 1864, the result of injuries suffered from a fall he took in his room in a cheap boarding house. He only had 38 cents in his pocket in Civil War money. It's worth noting that the Civil War, a time of intense suffering, had been raging for several years and still had nearly a year and a half to go before it limped to its end. Here's a link to a choral arrangement of Hard Times Come No More, Come Again No More that MCE has sung many times. We love it. And as our country begins to move out of quarantine, keep in mind the sufferings of many of our fellow citizens as you listen. 
and may hard times come again no more. The music has not stopped. We will sing again. Till next time.